Welcome back once again. And as we earlier said, uh, that Prime Minister Mustafa Mbouli held a meeting, uh, of course, uh, uh, to follow up over the procedures uh, uh, with uh, officials to uh, pro uh, hold a promo um, or um, implement a global promotional campaign for various uh, tourism uh, programs and destinations in Egypt. And uh, in the meeting, he indicated that Egypt is an exceptional, has an exceptional opportunity uh, during the coming winter uh, to become the number one destination visited by tourists. And he uh, stressed over the importance of promoting uh, the most charming spots worldwide that are located here in Egypt, such as uh, the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh, Marsa Alam, and Orgada. And we're very delighted to be having with us live over the phone, Mr. Elhami Zayed, the tourism expert. Good morning, Mr. Al Zayed. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Uh, uh, we were talking about uh, those uh, uh, promotional campaigns that are expected to be held by the Ministry of Tourism and other uh, assisting uh, uh, governments to be able to uh, talk to the world and uh, uh, exhibit to the world the beauty of Egypt during winter as a number one destination to be visited and also the, together with the national security Egypt is uh, enjoying right now. Absolutely. Uh, there are many, many factors mm. that should lead to the increase in number of tourists and the quality of tourism next year. Right. Uh, one, we have, of course, the COP19. COP19 in itself is an advertising. Word to mouth advertising. People will talk about what they have seen in Egypt. And definitely there will be some people convinced to come, uh, some of their friends, some of their neighbors, some of the people around them. So this is reason number one. Reason number two is that we see already uh, an, an, an influx of tourists coming to Egypt next winter, uh, which is a good sign. So we should add on it, improve, because there are few destinations from which people can choose because of the war in uh, the war in Ukraine and the COVID-19. So the few destination Egypt is one of the selected ones because it's proximity from Europe, the main sources of business, and the reasonable price Egypt is practicing now for tourism. So that's the second reason. But uh, I'm surprised you are not mentioning also the south of Egypt, upper Egypt which is much lo more lucrative for Egypt. It brings more money. And definitely we have several, several reasons why we should push this kind of tourism to Egypt next year. Uh, number one, that it's coming naturally. So we should piggyback on this and say, okay, now that we have British people, we have American, we have German coming back to Luxor and Aswan, let's push some more. Second, we have very many occasions, many occasions on this year that we are celebrating. One is the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun on the 4th of November. Secondly, is the discovery, the bicentennial of the discovery of the hieroglyphs, which in France is something very important. Champollion discovered the hieroglyphs in 1822. So this year it makes 200 years that we discovered the hieroglyphs, which opened the door for Egypt and for tourists to Egypt and Egyptomania and Egyptology. So both the scientific and Egyptomania, the lab of Egypt. Uh, thirdly, we know there are a lot of talks about the gem opening sometime next year. So also this is a good reason why we should talk about it, even if we don't know the exact date but we have to mention it. So these, all these factors combined make a push for upper Egypt necessary, if not very important for the economy, because this brings the high dollars, the top dollars, and this is where we should concentrate on. Mm. One of the most, uh, like you kindly mentioned, and as we all know, that one of the most pressing issues worldwide now at, at the forefront of the whole world's uh, concerns is the climate change and the issues of climate change and how to stand up to it. 
And as you see that uh, while Egypt is hosting uh, uh, the upcoming COP27 uh, uh, climate change summit that is going to be held in uh, uh, this November, uh, of course, the whole attention of the world is going to be focused over Egypt that is holding a conference in one of the most environmental friendly uh, cities, which is the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el Sheikh. There is no doubt. Another city that was declared uh, as uh, the first environment friendly city is the new uh, Valley Kharga uh, uh, city that is also located in Egypt. And that was declared by Her Excellency, the Minister of Environment, Dr. Yasmin Fouad. Um, of course, we know that uh, the uh, uh, Kharga city was declared as uh, one of the top environment-friendly cities because of the uh, no factories, the uh, uh, date packaging, and uh, because it uh, depends only on solar power and very, very important and developed and uh, civilized uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, w modern ways of living. If you like to focus over uh, that particular uh, uh, part or topic. Yes. Well, Kharga is very important because it has a combination of many, many things. Number one, as you said, the climate, and it's very definitely a green city because there is no pollution there. And uh, this is very, very important because that's the year of the climate change which we are discussing in Sharm el Sheikh. Secondly, Kharga has a lot of history. Kharga has the temple in Kharga itself, and then it has a lot of Turkish civilization, a lot of ancient uh, ruins, and a lot of villages. Very interesting to visit. There is a vision, a village that lives exactly like the ancient Egyptian used to live. I mean, uh, they clean it in the, in the desert. So obviously, they clean the city with the sand. And they clean it once a day, each uh, household cleans the trunk of itself. And then each week, the whole village reunites and cleans the whole village with sand. Uh, the way they keep the things for the whole year, the food, it's fantastic. The way they orient toilets so that there is no smell in the house, it's fantastic. This is all coming from ancient Egypt. Plus, of course, there are other uh, very important ruins from the Turkish era, uh, and we have to visit. Plus, the St. Jules. I mean, uh, St. Jules is an adventure to it. So all this is combined in this city of Kharga, which is unfortunately retired from the site now, but it's coming back, and we should push for it, especially if there is more peace on the Western Desert, and we can travel in the Western Desert now. Uh, how do you uh, assess uh, planting 7,000 uh, trees in Al Kharga Airport uh, Road uh, that were already planted and extending 11 kilometers? How do you think this is going to add to the beauty of a, um, of a native place like Al Kharga? And how could it be regarded by uh, European and international visitors who uh, choose Al Kharga uh, as a destination to visit? Uh, this is not only a matter of beauty, which it is definitely, and uh, it will show that we are interested by planting trees, but also it has a very, very important function. Mm. It's a wind stopper. You know, when you plant trees, and in areas like Kharga, where you can have sandstorm, any time, I mean not any time, but during the Hamatine period, this is stopping, or uh, it's, it's a way of not getting the sand to travel very fast. So it's, it's very good for the area and for the environment. So uh, I think when the trees will grow up, it will be very, very interesting for Sarkar. Right. Also, the governor's municipal authority had introduced a bike lane stretching a 6.3 uh, kilometer at a cost of uh, 10 million Egyptian pounds. How uh, does that uh, going to impact ecotourism? Uh, where, where did you say the, the, the biking? Come again, please. 
I didn't get the question. Uh, we were talking about uh, a bike uh, lane stretching on a 6.3 okay. uh, kilometers uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, uh, introduced by the government municipality uh, to be taken uh, over there. I was asking you if this is going to be having a good impact over ecotourism. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, because there are no carbon gas emissions in biking. And secondly, it allows the people to have some activities, some sports activity, which is good because if you go there and visit Amdu, you like to do something. Plus for some programs like incentive programs, it's a good idea to do some kind of competition between the participants. So there is some life in the trip itself. It's not just a trip, it's not a receiving and like a, a guide tell you, you go here, you go there. But there, is, there are also some activities and this is quite crucial uh, to encourage this kind of tourism. So yes, Kharga is extremely rich and we should use it to the maximum. Right. Uh, as the whole world is focusing towards affecting uh, the utmost green economy, how do you think green cities are going to boost and empower uh, economies worldwide? Well, more and more people traveling are, of course, looking for what they have on the top of their agenda, but also those who travel a lot or those who have to choose between two destinations, they will select a green city. See, it's more attractive, it's cleaner for the lungs, it's cleaner for the body, mm -hmm. and people would like to go there. And uh, Sharm el Sheikh, I'm very happy to hear it will be the first real green city because uh, Kharga is more compared to Sharm. And uh, we have been claiming this since 2008. Mm. So, uh, since 2008, on Agenda 21 of the World Travel and Tourist Council, this was the, the major point we raised. And uh, since then, it stopped, so I'm very happy now. It's back and it has been implemented. So, this right. is excellent. Right. Mr. Elhemi Zayed, an economic ex uh, uh, tourism expert, would like to thank you, uh, sir, very much. And thank you uh, for talking uh, to The Breakfast Show today. And I guess by this, we come to the end of uh, the show for today. Many thanks to all of you. Until we see you again tomorrow, that's a goodbye.